Hey guys, my name is Austin Gregory and in this course I'm going to teach you how to create an inventory and a crafting system. The inventory is going to be your typical grid based slot drag and drop style inventory system and the crafting system is going to be heavily influenced by Minecraft's crafting system with the nine slots in a grid that you can drag and drop items into and then it'll do a recipe lookup to see if you have the items to craft a new item. And we're going to take two approaches to this. We're going to have a system in place where you have to have the items in a specific slot in the crafting grid for it to work. Similar to the way Minecraft works where you have to have items in a certain order to craft certain items. And we're also going to have it where you can actually just place items in the grid and it's going to use the items just as a whole, not care about the sequence of the items. What I have in front of me is just a to-do list that we have to check off as we go here and by the time we check off the last item we will have a pretty sweet inventory and crafting system to work with. So the first thing we have to do is create our item and recipe data structures and these are going to be classes that allow us to define what an item and a recipe is and we're going to talk about that here in just a second. So. I have the window open for Unity to create a new project. I'm going to go to New, and I'm going to create a Unity project. It's going to be Zenva, Inventory, and Crafting. I'm going to uh, select 2D, and I do not need Analytics enabled for this. does not matter how you do this for yours. And now, I have my layout that looks like this. This is how I work but I'm going to go to layout and I'm going to go to the default layout so we can all be working on the same layout. I'm going to go to default and this is what you should see if you have the default layout. Now we want to create a little bit of a folder structure here. I'm going to go to, I'm going to right click on assets, I'm going to go to create and I'm going to select folder and I want to have a couple of folders to keep my project semi-organized. I'm not so great at that myself but we can do it a little bit better for this video surely. So I'm going to have a folder for scripts then I'm going to right click in here and go to create again and we have a folder for resources. Now this is going to be where our item icons are and our uh, things that we have to load in dynamically are going to be stored in here. This is a special folder in Unity that allows us to access the data within it directly through a class called resources and we'll get into that a bit later on. And also speaking of the item icons, those are going to be available for you in the project download that you get. So in resources, I'm going to create a folder that's going to be called items. And that's all we need for now. So we said I want to create the item data structure. So I'm going to do that in scripts. It's going to be a C sharp script. So I want to go create C sharp script and I want to call it item. And I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio by double clicking on it. And when you open it up, this is what you should see. We have some using statements up top here, public class item that inherits from mono behavior. Great. And we have some default methods. So what I want to do is I'm going to set this up and then we'll talk about, it. I want to get rid of the inheritance from mono behavior because this does not need to inherit from that. I'm going to get rid of that. And we'll talk about what a class is here in just a second. For those of you that would like a refresher, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these methods. We're not going to be using those for this. We're going to create all of our stuff ourselves here. And this is what we have, a public class called item with two curly braces. Cool. So quickly, what is a class? If you're not familiar, uh, a class is something that we can design that will act as a blueprint for whenever we construct objects in the future. So think of a blueprint for building a building. You're going to drop all the specs for this and then you're going to hand it off to someone that's going to follow the specs on that sheet and build the building according to your specs. And that's going to be the same thing for this class of item. What we're going to do is we're going to write the specs for item and it's not going to actually be an item. It's just going to be the blueprint for an item. And then later on, we can construct our items based on this blueprint. And that'll all make sense as we go. So with that said, what does item have to be? What is an item? How can we define an item? What an item has to be in this system, at least, is it has to have a title, a name, has to have a description, some flavor text about it, has to have an icon, we know that, need an icon for this item, has to have a stat list, perhaps, so we can have some stats on our items, just a dictionary, simple dictionary, we'll cover that as well as an integer that will be the identifier for it. 
So I'll go ahead and type these out. I want to have a public int ID, the identifier for it. And these are going to be publicly accessible. So public int ID. I'm then going to have a public string. And this is going to be the title. Now I'm calling it title instead of name because by default objects already have a name field and we do not want to have any conflicts with already existing fields, right? It's very simple to just call it something else, in this case title. If you want to call it anything else other than that, you're more than welcome to. Then I can have a public string for the description. Now these are just strings of text, so title is going to be a name, description is going to be a paragraph or something like that. And then, like I said, we're going to have the icon. But the icon is going to be a sprite. So I'm going to do public sprite. And I'm going to call it icon. Great. So we can assign a sprite object to this item. And that will represent the item in the UI. Pretty cool. I also want to have, like I said, the stat list. Now, we're going to use a dictionary for this. Because what we want to do is we want to have a name of the stat, say power or defense. And then we want to have the number that the stat is, the level the stat is, or the value the stat is. So the dictionary allows us to do that very easily by having a string key and then having an int for the value. So I can say power is 10 and defense is 7. And all that is within a single collection. Pretty cool. So to do that, we first have to make sure we have system.collections.generic because dictionary is a generic type. I'm then going to type again public. I want to type dictionary. And I get this. And what this allows me to do with these two brackets here, the two angle brackets, it allows me to define the type that this dictionary is going to be. Hence, generic. It doesn't know the type until I define it. So I'm going to have string and then int. So string is going to be the key. Int is going to be the value. So power, 10. Defense, 20 so on. Pretty cool, pretty simple. And the way we look it up is we just pass it the value of the name, so power, and it will return the value of the stat, so 10. Very easy. I'm going to call this stats. Then I'm going to initialize it with new dictionary string int. Now the reason I'm doing this and the way this works is because this, if I were to define it, isn't actually initializing it as the object of dictionary. It's just defining the field. Then later on, I can initialize it and then add data to it. But I'm going to go ahead and initialize it here. And then later on, I'm just going to send data to the constructor for this item. And then it's going to add that to the dictionary. So now I'm using the new keyword here. That means I'm going to create a new object from dictionary using the dictionary constructor. And that means it's going to create simply a new dictionary and store it in the field of stats. Pretty cool. So now I have a stats dictionary. So I mentioned a constructor. We need a constructor for item as well because I want to be able to pass data to item and then assign that data to the ID, title, description, icon, and the stats dictionary. And the way that works is I have a blueprint with this this these fields in here, right? ID, title, description. And I can create a constructor that allows me to pass parameters to this object that I'm creating and it will initialize the object with those values as the default. If I were to do it without a constructor, I'd just say new item, kind of like I'm doing new dictionary here, it will do the value, it'll do the type default. So I'll have ID would be zero, string would be empty, description would be empty, and icon would be null, because of the de those are the defaults for those types. But instead, I want to initialize my item with some values when I create it, right? There's no reason to create the item in this case unless it is an actual item. So I'm going to have public item. So I'm just saying public and then the name of the class and that creates a constructor. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to pass the parameters or we're going to add the parameters that we can get into this item. So I want to be able to get the ID and we'll go int ID. And I'm going to follow down the list here with the type and the name of the field string title, string description, uh, sprite icon, and then dictionary. I'm going to have to do the same thing here. Dictionary string int, and then it's called stats. Now, of course, these names do not have to match. It just makes it easier for me if they are the same. 
And then what I want to do is I want to assign those values to the values of the item whenever we construct the item. So if I were to go from another class and say new item like this, I could then pass in the values that I want this new item to have. So ID of zero, name of sword, and so on, and just pass the values. And then when this item is created, when this object is initialized, it'll have those values. Pretty cool. So I have to initialize it with that. So I'm going to say this dot ID, this referring to the item I'm creating, the instance of the item I just created. And that'll make sense whenever we actually construct the item here in a moment. This dot ID is equal to ID. So this refers to the instance field, and this refers to the parameter I just passed in. So now this dot title is equal to title, and this dot description is equal to description. This dot icon is equal to icon. Now, we're going to do something a bit different here with the icon, but I cannot do it yet until I get them actually loaded into the game. So I'm going to just have it like that for now, but later on, I'm going to come in and load the icon from the resources folder based on the icon or based on the item name. So in fact, we won't need the sprite icon to be passed into item. All we need to do is have the name and then load the icon based on the item's name. And we'll get to that here in a bit. And then this dot stats is equal to stats. I also want to create a constructor that's going to act as a cloning constructor. And that would not be something we don't, that'll be something we need a bit later on, but I want to go ahead and create it while we're in here. And what a cloning constructor is going to do is going to take an item of itself. So we have the class called item. And I want to create a constructor that takes a parameter of item and then just creates a copy of that item. And the reason we do this, and you'll understand this again later on, but um, I need to create a copy of an item before I erase the reference to the item. So I then have a hard copy of that item. It's a deeper copy of that item than I had before I made the changes to it. So all I have to do is I have to create a public item. And it's going to take a parameter of itself of the self type. So it's going to be item called item. And this will probably be confusing for now, but you'll understand later on exactly why we need this. And since I'm already in here, I want to go ahead and write it up. And I'm going to take and again, do this.id is equal to, but this time I'm going to do item.id. Item being the parameter we passed in, item has the field of ID on it, has the field of title on it. So we can grab those fields with that item. So whatever item that I pass in to this item constructor, I am then going to be cloning the information to a new item. And this comes back to value versus reference type, which we can't really get into in this course, uh, but uh, you should probably check that out if you're confused as to why this works. This dot title is equal to item dot title. This dot description is equal to item dot description. This dot icon is equal to, again, I'm going to do item.icon for now. But I may have to load that into the resources. Well, I won't because I don't already have that. So that, that'll be fine. And then this.stats is equal to item.stats. So I'm just cloning the information over from item to a new item that I'm creating. And that's going to be it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to create the recipe data structure. I'll see you there.